at children's time a couple of weeks ago, Connie talked about, and maybe in the first, first message of Advent, when he was talking about Christmas gifts, a big part of Christmas. You know, it's a time we give and receive gifts. And Kaylee asked a very inspiring question. She said, basically, if it's Jesus' birthday, why are we getting gifts? Shouldn't we give him gifts? Now that question inspired this message. It got me to thinking about giving gifts to Jesus. And it forced me to ask myself, what gift do I have for Jesus? What gift do I have for Jesus? Now what about you? What about you? Do you have a gift for Jesus? I'm going to give you the answer to that. You do. You might not know it, but you do. And I'll give you that answer if you have to figure it out at the end of the message. You know, one of the most famous Christmas stories is about the wise men bringing gifts to baby Jesus. Essentially, there were some astronomers east of Israel, and they noticed an unusual star. Something just unusual. So we got to investigate this. So they struck out, as we say down south, struck out on a journey. Not struck out baseball. We, we strike out. We strike out to go somewhere. Is that, is that a southern thing that y'all ever about that? Okay. So they went to investigate. <coughs> they felt it was a star of a king. And they wanted to worship and give gifts to this new king. The star led them to the area of Jerusalem. So I guess as a courtesy or protocol, whatever, <laughs> smart men, duh, wise men, <laughs> we better go pay King Herod a visit. And that's what they told him what they thought the star meant. And it worried Herod. Because Herod was the king. Herod was the king. And he didn't ask his, quote, wise men, priests and scribes and what have you. And they said, oh yes, the Old Testament said that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem. Herod told us that, don't y'all go find this newborn king. Go look for him and be sure you let me know where he is where I can come and worship him also. Let's pick up the story in, in Matthew chapter 2 verses set, beginning in verse 7 through 12. <coughs> then Herod secretly called the Magi and ascertained from them the time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and make a careful search for the child. And when you find him, report to me that I may come and worship him. And having heard the king, they went on their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went on before, before them until it stood over where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And they came into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and worshipped him. And opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their own country by another way. Herod wanted to know the details of this star. 
Let me know if you find this child. If, if, you know, the, the Old Testament says that Messiah will be born in Bethlehem. Maybe that's what's happened. I want to know also. I want to worship you. They searched carefully and they found the child. As we read, they were excited, filled with joy, fell down and worshipped this baby. Now, I'm assuming that Joseph and Mary uh, didn't live in a big house by any shape, form, or fashion. Some scholars believe that Jesus, this was not necessarily, that Jesus was probably not a newborn infant. Maybe been, maybe had been a few months old, maybe a year old, maybe a little older. That's, there's, a, there's a debate in there how old he was. This could have been a few months, maybe a year after his birth. But anyway, they come and see the child. Bow down and give him expensive, I want to stress to you, expensive gifts. Well, we know gold is expensive. Frankincense, which is incense, myrrh, which is essentially perfume. They knew that Herod had probably evil intent. And they didn't tell him they found the child. <coughs> they left. They left. Now that's a story, a very famous story. We know it well. We hear it often this time of year. But I want to focus again in on the gifts. The gifts had monetary value, obviously, as well as symbolic value. The monetary value of these gifts would have been a windfall for Joseph and Mary. It would be the equivalent of us hitting the big time lock. If that's something you do, if you play the lock. Like I buy a ticket every now and then. When he gets those big, you know, those hundred million, you know what? You're not going to win it if you don't buy a ticket. <laughs> and if you win it, the Bible says you should give 10% to the church. So, leave that with anybody. Those were expensive gifts. Any one of those gifts, I did a lot of research on this part of it, any one of those gifts could have been a small fortune. Now, you know, it gets a little, I looked at this all over the place, but I come up with figures, could be anywhere from $100,000 to a million dollars. If that's in their time, that's just not astronomical, that's just beyond us. I mean, that's big money in our time, obviously. But whatever the case, it was a windfall for Joseph and Mary. And I got to thinking about it. I said, you know what? It, did, did Joseph have all his carpenter tools? Did he have his shop already? I thought, I said, well, maybe when those, they gave those gifts. I mean, they just didn't keep them. I, I, don't, I mean, I guess, I mean, they used them maybe. I don't know, you know. So, especially the gold, you know, you rub the murder on you. And you burn the incense. What you gonna do with the gold? So you're gonna look at it. I think they invested it. I think he invested it again. That's just that's just Blaine Smith thinking of it. But possibly that's how Joseph started in this carpenter business. Gold symbolizes the kingship of Christ. Jesus Christ is the king to come. Now we talk the kingship of Christ all the time. But Jesus Christ has never been a literal king on this earth. But he is going to be a literal king on this earth. He will sit on his throne in Jerusalem sometime, someday. That's the reason we say Jesus Christ, king of kings and lord of lords. 
That's a good aim in his life. Frankincense symbolizes his divinity. We talked about that last week. God becoming a man. That is what Christmas is all about. It, that's it. That's it in a nutshell. Gifts are good. I like them. We talked about that. Family get together, eating food and all that. I like that too. But it is all about God becoming a man. Folks, don't ever lose sight of that. That's what Christmas is all about. God becoming a man. Emmanuel, God with us, God in the flesh, a God that can be seen, a God that's not invisible, a God that took on our sins. He became sin for you and I. He died on the cross. God became a man. Murder. <coughs> Again, was a type of perfume, an oily. Perfume. Used to anoint kings and to anoint the dead. That could have dual symbolism there. Christ is the king. But also died on the cross. Myrrh might have been, they would anoint the bodies with myrrh. They would anoint kings. You know, you know, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Y'all know that. Did everybody know that? And, and, and my goodness, how the name of Jesus has been profaned in our culture. To profane it and use it as a derogatory cuss word. Can I say that? A cuss word? My goodness, folks. You know, we may slip up and out of the yard. See that black thumb? Can I see that? <laughs> I hit that with a hammer. Two times. After it got better, I hit it again. Somebody asked me about it. That's how you heard me say this. It's so true. That was enough to make the preacher cuss. <laughs> but I did not profane the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Christ. He is the anointed one. Yes, those gifts have great symbolism. They were expensive because they knew how important Jesus was. They gave him gifts that reflected his importance. How important is Jesus to you? How important is Jesus to me, to you? Do you have a gift for Jesus? In reality, the only gift that you have you can give Jesus is yourself. That's all he really wants from you. That's all. That's all he wants from you. Yourself and your service to the kingdom of God. By giving him yourself to him, you acknowledge the gift that he gave you. And that gift he gave you was his own life. He gave you your salvation. Remember that he died for your sins. What better gift could you ask for? What better gift? And what better gift could you give to Christ than yourself? What better gift could you give?
you give to Christ than yourself? Think about it. Is there a better gift that you can give? 